Smith & Wesson model 1917 45 ACP revolver. These were made to supplement the shortage of 1911s during World War I and really became an, a legendary firearm, a real piece of history. Now this is a beautiful specimen, uh, probably made around 1918, 1919. A, a very excellent World War I vintage revolver, still very functional and in very good condition. Uh, these are highly sought after by collectors and run in the eight to $1,100 range. Now this was really made to supplement the shortage of 1911. So uh, I don't know how many of these honestly saw combat, but most of these were you know, rear lines and truck drivers, different things like that, uh, to be able to, to have a sidearm in case they needed it. But the bluing on this is just exceptional and just a very high quality piece. Now the M1917 was made by Colt and Smith & Wesson. And there's a few differences. The Colt actually weighs a quarter of a pound more than the Smith & Wesson. Uh, the Colt weighed two and a half pounds. The Smith & Wesson weighed one and a, two and a quarter pounds. Has a five and a half inch barrel. Uh, it has smooth grips and it's a six shot revolver. Double action, so that means that when you pull the hammer back it'll, it'll fire. It can also be fired in single action. It does have the exposed hammer so you really shouldn't dry fire this uh, type pistol often. You don't want to bend this firing pin. You can see from the, <laughs> the cylinder what a massive cylinder and of course there are modern firearms today that are made for 45 ACP but one of the things that was really unique about this design was it was made to use the half moon clips and it was two half moon clips and it could be fed very quickly almost as quickly as changing a magazine uh, the one difference between the Colt and the Smith & Wesson was um, the Smith & Wesson actually had this built in to where you could actually fire a round through here without the moon clips but the problem was after the round was fired you had to have something to actually push the shell through, the empty brass through the cylinder. The Colt wouldn't accept that because they would actually slide down into the cylinder and it would cause some headspace problems. Now there's also a full moon clip design that would fit directly in and that kept from a lot of the bending and as you can see all you needed to do was hit the ejection rod and it would pop these right out. Uh, really a very quick reloading system which these are very easy to attach just right on the rim makes it a dedicated speed loader. Now if you'll notice I'm shooting factory ammunition, I'm shooting some HPR 45 uh, full metal jacket. The surplus rounds for this gun we're keeping just as surplus. I go ahead and do this ahead of time that way when I'm out at the range I'm not out here loading as much. More time to shoot. There's just something about that 45. <laughs> Now these are actually U.S. military rounds that I have in these full moon clips. And in fact this is a box of original military surplus ammunition. But um, I really was shooting commercial out of this just because I didn't want to use up these uh, vintage loads. But this is one tool, and this is by Brownells, but this is one of the tools used to remove off of the, um, the moon clip. These can be a real pain to get off the clip. Now of course these are uh, still... Uh, full cartridges but with the empty brass it makes it difficult and as you can see it's a hollow with a little lip and you just kind of fit it into the moon clip and twist and then out comes the bullet they did have a lanyard attached down at the bottom which uh, made it great for military use to keep from losing the pistol on the side here it says Smith & Wesson double action 45 US Army model 1917 of course, the serial number is right here. Of course, it starts with a 121,000, which uh, again designates it to around the late 1918-1919. Now, on September 13, 1918, uh, right in the middle of World War I, Springfield Armory began to distribute these to the troops. And when Springfield Armory took over, they began to stamp right here on the top of the barrel. So if you see Springfield Armory here, that means the, the pistol itself was made after September 13th, 1918. And uh, on here it just talks about patent numbers, Smith & Wesson. These were originally made in the blue, with bluing, 
but later they were refurbished into a parkerized finish. And many of these were used for training and for different purposes, even up to World War II. But frontline use, of course, the 1911 dominated. Now here is a 1917 holster, and it has right here uh, G and K, 1917, and then it has an A, G. Uh, you can see that it's a very old, but in a pretty decent used condition. Just a really neat old holster. It has U.S. stamped, embossed right here on the holster itself. Now, in 1937, the Brazilian military began to order these, and these were actually designated the M1937. And one of the ways that you can tell the difference is there's a large Brazilian crest here, but it's still a Smith & Wesson pistol. They ordered 25,000 of these, so they do show up regularly in many of the, the vintage gun uh, circuits. And as always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more fun gun reviews and sensible survival. God bless America. Long live the Republic. We're going to look at this little pistol. This is a little genius, J22. This is a very high quality pistol for the money. Um, some say it's junk. It's a very nice little pistol. Look, looks nice. Looks real nice. Yes, yeah.